today, let's look at four ways in which we can cure or at least lessen our depression and anxiety. Hello YouTube friends, thanks for visiting my channel again and to those who are visiting for the first time today, a big welcome to you. My name is Rose and my channel deals with matters of the mind, good mental health and trying to be the best we can every day. One of the first facts that really shocked me was that depression occurs almost 50% more in people aged around 30 to 40 than it does in people 65 years and over. I asked the question, why would this be? Older people have much more stress in their lives these days than they did in days gone by. For one thing, the extended family no longer exists. Their children are moving away and living in countries far away. A lot of older people are worrying about an unreliable health system that they've got to rely on. And the cost of living, I suppose, is a huge worry. But still, the, the occurrence of depression is half of what it is in younger people. On looking into this, the first thing that I noticed is that older people don't and never did lead the lifestyles that younger people lead today. We're going to look into this. We're going to talk about just four aspects of this, um, but four very important aspects. And we're going to find solutions today. Number one, older folk were not exposed to the digital world that younger people found themselves in. They didn't have computers, they definitely didn't have mobile phones or cell phones. There was no internet, so there was no social media and online shopping probably about the most screen time that they had about 50 years ago would have been a couple of hours TV time in the evenings before they went to bed. But further than that, it just wasn't part of their life in those days. And secondly, physical activity. 50 years ago, women would more likely have been housewives. They would have stayed home and done their own housework. Um, they wouldn't have gone to gym in those days, but just doing housework every day and perhaps even a little bit of gardening is really just exercise on a daily basis. The men, some of them farmed, operated heavy equipment, the ones who didn't, who worked in office jobs, still mostly did the gardening themselves. They would have pushed a lawn mower, not an electric or a, a fuel powered mower like we have today. They would have had a push mower. They would have been up and down pulling out weeds. And all that is, was a lot of exercise. The other thing is that a lot of people 50 years ago didn't have cars. They were lucky if there was one car in the family. That meant public transport or walking. And even if you used public transport, it was still walking to the bus stop or the train station and getting exercise without even knowing they were getting it. And of course, our children are indoors so much you know, 50 years ago, children were outside, they were, they were playing, they were playing games in the streets. Today, that's not possible for children to be playing out in the streets. But even when they are able to play in their own backyards, they choose not to. Children prefer to be indoors on the PlayStation, on their phone or watching TV. So there too, there's a complete lack of activity. The third item on my list is healthy eating. 
50 years ago, people would have prepared food from raw in their own kitchens. There would have been very little, if at all, processed foods eaten. And in those days, people ate a lot of oily fish. Salmon, trout, pilchard, sardines. And as we all know, the oily fish are our greatest source of omega-3 fatty acids and the most incredible brain food. So all of these things add to the fact that younger people are suffering from depression. Lastly, in this video, the fourth item we're going to talk about is our lifestyles. I'm sure your grandmother never worked all day and rushed to collect you somewhere, rushed home, cooked supper, fed you, bathed you, got you into the bed, all the time trying to be the best mother that she can, feeling guilty most of the time. Your grandfather, even if he did work all day, he would have come home to quite a peaceful house where his wife had been looking after the children and taking care of the household chores. He didn't have to get stuck in and start making dinner or helping with the bathing of the children. Because he'd worked all day, he, he had time to relax and to get rid of his stresses of the day. The way we're living today is stressful to say the least. So let's talk about some solutions. It's no good pointing out all the bad things without finding some solutions to them. Screen time. Yes, I understand that you go to work, you work on a computer all day, you might be in an industry where you need to be on social media, and we definitely all need our mobile phones to keep contact with each other whether for business or personal reasons. But when we get home from work, we definitely can set a time for ourselves to switch our phones off. By then, everybody we know is safe and sound at home. Our children are home, they're in their beds. Unless you have a sick relative or some really good reason. There's no reason why you shouldn't turn your phone off at half past nine, ten o'clock at night. The other thing that will stop you doing is lying in bed and watching YouTube videos, being on Facebook, whatever it is you do, until just before you turn your light out and then try and go to sleep. And we all know that screen time up until the minute you try to go to sleep is just the worst thing for an insomnia. So these little things, just these, these couple of little changes in your life, turning off your phone and reading in bed rather than being on your phone, that is going to decrease your depression so much you just you'll be surprised at how much after a, a short period of time regarding not getting enough exercise I know a lot of us just don't have time to go to the gym or the inclination but the fact that you're watching this video means that you are very possibly suffering from depression and or anxiety and surely you're going to want to do some of the things that are going to improve the situation and you know you don't need to be doing an awful amount of exercise running 10 kilometers every day it's quite enough if you do some exercise even if it's a brisk walk for about 30 minutes three times a week that will have an incredibly good effect on your mental health. Certain things happen in your brain when you exercise 
and we can get into that some other time in more detail but exercise is an absolute winner for dealing with depression not getting enough brain food not enough oily fish I get it you don't have time to go and buy a fresh piece of salmon or trout or pilchards on the way home from work understand that your life is busy and you do what you can you put together the best dinner you can at night but you can take omega-3 fatty acids as a supplement there's no reason why all of us can't be doing this and this is the best brain food that you can have maybe it's not ideal you know maybe you would prefer to be having a piece of salmon but failing that get some supplements but make sure you take them every day find out what the correct dosage is for whatever brand of supplement you're taking and make sure you take the full dosage every day busy lifestyles how does one make your day-to-day -day life your business life life of a busy parent easier not easy but it might have to take some organization how organized are you in your home by being a little more organized could you free up some time when you get home from work what about on a saturday morning or sometime over the weekend that you have free cooking monday to thursday's meals don't worry about a Friday. A Friday, most people have a takeaway or a burger or whatever. Monday to Thursday's meals. Cook them and put them in the freezer. Just imagine the difference getting home from work and not having to cook. Just taking something out of the freezer, defrosting it, and perhaps spending that time not feeling so guilty about not spending time with your children. Maybe spend that time just talking to them. Try it. I have tried it in the past and it really does work. It just frees up so much time. And it also takes the planning out of it. You're not thinking every day what you're going to have for supper. Think about it once a week. Buy the goods. Cook them, freeze them and forget about it until Friday night when you may have a takeaway. Another thing, are you spending too much time doing housework in the evenings when you get home? I know you need to keep the place you live in clean, but just don't be so hard on yourself. We've been talking about giving extra time to your children and your family. You need to give some time to yourself. You know what? Nobody's going to notice those sparkling floors except you. And tomorrow somebody's going to walk on them and they're not going to be sparkling anymore. Just lighten up a bit and maybe there too get a bit organized and say, I will do some cleaning up on a Wednesday evening when the children are in bed. You can't work all day and come home and work all night. Something's got to break. And you know what happens? Next thing you feel you can't cope with your day-to-day -day duties and tasks. And the next thing you know, you're suffering from depression. The fact that you're watching this, you probably already are suffering from depression. You need to lighten up on yourself and Give yourself some time off some me time that's what you need so what are we going to do we're going to turn off our phones earlier than we normally would if our half past nine ten o'clock and not watch videos on our phone until the minute we try to go to sleep we're going to get some exercise just moderate three times a week 30 minutes quite enough we're going to buy 
some omega-3 fatty acid supplements and make sure that we take them every day. And then lastly in this segment, we're going to try to get a little more organized in our lives and make sure that we, by being organized, that we're freeing up some time to spend with our family, our partner, but definitely with yourself. It's time to take that long bath and read a book and have some quality me time. I hope these four factors that we've spoken about are helpful to you. Perhaps you can think about your life and maybe just with four little baby steps you can start making some positive and permanent changes in your life. And I hope if you are suffering from depression that by doing this you feel so much better. Maybe a cure is in sight for you and if not a complete cure then a lessening of that feeling of extreme anxiety, sadness, fatigue and all the things that go with depression. If you know of anyone else who would benefit from this video, please share it with them. And I hope that you join us again next time for more talks on good mental health. Bye for now.